Section 9.1, infinite series. Given an infinite sequence, then the infinite sum is, here's summation notation for summing up an infinite amount of terms of a sequence. So you could have a sub 1 plus a sub 2 plus a sub 3 plus, keep going with that, uh, through the a sub nth, or the nth term, and then all the way to infinity, which is an infinite series or a series. A series is a sequence of partial sums. A series creates a new sequence. The partial sums of the series form a sequence. So in other words, if you wanted the partial sum just s sub 1, that would just be the first term. The, the uh, value in the next partial sum, this forms a sequence. s sub 2 is the first term plus the second term and so on. So you have a sequence of sums, of partial sums. So the third sum would be a sub 1 plus a sub 2 plus a sub 3. And you could do that uh, infinitely. So s sub n, let's say the, the third, not the third, we need something bigger than 3. How about s sub 10 is equal to the sum of k equals 1 to 10 of a sub 10. So the tenth term, in other words, actually this would be, that, that would be just k down there. So we have uh, a sub k if k is going from 1 to 10. Uh, and this says the partial sums of the series form a sequence of real numbers, each defined as a finite sum. If the sequence of partial sums has a limit s, as n approaches infinity, we say the series converges to the sum s, and we write that this sum right here, this uh, uh, infinite sum has some sort of limit and it's converging to that value. Otherwise we say the series diverges. If s sub 1, s sub 2, s sub 3 all the way through s sub n converges then the series converges. So we're looking for the values of the sums not of the individual terms. So the terms can, can, be, can be converging to a value but that doesn't mean that the sum is converging. The sum of series when it exists is not the limit of the different terms but the limit of those terms added up. Given the sum as n approaches 1 to infinity of 1 over 2n, find if the series converges or diverges. Well, let's look at the partial sums. So we have sigma n equals 1 to infinity of a sub n, and that's equal to the first term plus the second term plus the third term plus keep on going with that pattern. So here's the first sum, and it's just the first term, which is one half. The partial sum for two terms is one half plus the next one. Uh, this is going, this sequence is going one half, one fourth, one eighth, one sixteenth, and so on. So the, the, the partial sum for two terms is one half plus one fourth, which is three-fourths, and s sub three equals, well, let's take this last one right here, three-fourths, and we need to add on, we've added on one-fourth, let's add on one-eighth, which is seven-eighths when you do common denominator. The fourth partial sum is, we'll take that seven-eighths, which is the third partial sum, plus we've added on an eighth, we need to add on one-sixteenth, which is fifteen Sixteenths. Now let's see if we can see a pattern going on here with 1, 3, 7, and 15 and kind of generalize it. Well, 1, 3, 7, 15 is the powers of 2 minus 1. The powers of 2 would be 2, 4, 8, and 16. So that's one less than the powers, and that, that's in the numerator. And then the denominator, uh, they're just the powers of 2. So we have 2 to the n. Well, we're looking to find the limit as n approaches infinity of 2 to the n minus 1 over 2 to the n. These are the, the partial sums. We want to see if those sums are going uh, to a value. And we don't want equal here. We want to uh, just take the limit of that. Well, that equals, well, we can split this up. Limit as n approaches infinity of 2 to the n over 2 to the n minus 1 over 2 to the n. This becomes 1, of course. We have limit as n approaches infinity of 1 minus 1 over 2 to the n, which is equal to 
1 minus 1 over infinity, and that part right there is 0, so we have an answer of 1. So this, uh, this series does converge to a value of 1. This series is a geometric series because to get the next term, we're multiplying by a half every time. So the, ser the sequence is, you know, 1 half, 1 fourth, 1 eighth, 1 sixteenth, and to get the series, we are adding those together. So this is a geometric series. Now, if we want to write this recursively, we can say that a sub n equals 1 half times a sub n minus 1. So to get the new one, we take the old one, multiply by a half. So we have this geometric series, and you can write it two different ways. If you're going to start n at 1, you're going to go from 1 to infinity of the first turn times r to the n minus 1. But if you want n to start at 0 and you have that option, then you want to multiply by 1 on the very first, uh, first term. So you could have 0 to infinity and just knock this down, uh, or add 1 to it, actually. Let's look at a geometric series. We could say that S sub n equals, all right, the first term of the sequence plus the first term times r plus the first term times r squared. So if we looked at the one we have right now, the first one's a half. And then r is, remember, r is a half also. And we could take the first one and multiply by a half, so that's a fourth. Then we could take the first one, which is a half, and multiply by r squared, which is a fourth, and we would get that one eighth. So we have one half, one fourth, one eighth. And we could keep going on this pattern infinitely. Well, let's say we wanted to multiply both sides of this equation by r. We'd have r times s sub n equals r times this series right here, which would make this a times r. There, I have it right there. And it bumps all of these powers of r up 1. So we'd have squared, third, fourth, and so on, all the way up to, well, if this is the power of n, and we're multiplying by another r, then the power now is just n plus 1. Well, then we could subtract the two equations, s sub n minus r s sub n. Look what would happen. We, there's a minus, and there's no term here with just a, so we'd have a. But then we could take a times r minus a, uh, uh, a r, and those would cancel out. And then we'd have a r squared minus a r squared, those cancel out. And everybody would cancel out in the middle except for this one right here. That one wouldn't have anything to cancel out in s sub n. So we'd have a minus a r n to the uh, a r to the n plus one. I'm getting a little tongue tied today. Then I could factor out s sub n and have one minus r on this side. Then divided by one minus r. Now the limit as n approaches infinity, we would have a value. We'd have a nice value here if r right here is between negative one and one. In other words, a fraction. So it would be uh, let's say it was a half we'd have 1 over 2 to the n plus 1. That would go to infinity, but this would go to 0. So the conclusion with that being said is the series converges as long as r is a fraction between negative 1 and 1, and the value it goes to is a sub 1 over 1 minus r. Does the one we've been working with converge? We already know it does, but now if we look at the series, we'd have 1 half plus 1 fourth plus 1 eighth plus 1 sixteenth, keep on going. a sub 1 equals 1 half, and r equals a half. So the series converges to 1 half over 1 minus 1 half. There's a sub 1 right there, and this is the r. So we have 1 half over 1 minus a half is a half. So that is equal to 1, just like we got before. In your packet, we have geometric series nth term test for divergence. The geometric series test. A geometric series is in the form n equals 0 to infinity of a sub 1 times r to the n, or if you want to start at 1, you can go 1 to infinity, but then that has to be n minus 1, where a cannot equal 0 because we don't want all the terms to just be 0. The geometric series diverges if the absolute value of r is greater than or equal to 1. In other words, it's not a fraction. It's not, uh, well, you know, it's not a fraction less than 1, let's say. If the absolute value of r is less than 1, then the series converges to the sum a sub 1 over 1 minus r. Let's look at ex some examples. Determine whether the following series converges or diverges. 
let's look at the series. We'd have 3 over 2 if n was 1, plus if n was 2, we'd have 3 fourths, plus 3 eighths, plus 3 sixteenths. a sub 1 equals 3 halves, good so far. And r is equal to a half, we're multiplying each term by a half to get the next one. Well, r is a fraction less than 1, so this is going to converge. s equals 3 halves over 1 minus 1 half. This is equal to 3 halves over 1 half, cancel out the 2's. We will say that the series converges to, one, uh, to 3 by geometric series test. It's very important to write this statement right here. To get full credit, you need to summarize and say that this series is actually converging, what it's converging to, and how do you know that it converges. We know that from the geometric series test. Let's look at the next one. If n is 1, then the first term is 3 halves. And then if uh, n is 2, then we add on 9 fourths, and then 27 uh, eighths, and then 81 sixteenths, and so on. The first term, a sub 1, is 3 halves, and r is also 3 halves. We're multiplying by 3 halves to get the next term. Well, 3 halves is bigger than 1, so the series diverges uh, by the geometric series test simply because r is bigger than 1. The nth term test for divergence. If the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n, if it does not equal 0, then the series diverges. Note. This does not say that if the limit does equal zero, then the series converges. It doesn't say that. This test can only be used to prove, prove that something diverges. If the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n equals zero, then this test doesn't tell us anything, and we need to use another test. So if it's not equal to zero, we're good. This thing diverges. If it's equal to zero, then we're going to have to come up with a different test to decide whether or not it converges or diverges. So let's take example A. We're going to take the limit as n approaches infinity of 2n plus 3 over 3n minus 5. This is equal to 2 thirds, which does not equal 0. This series diverges by the nth term test. On the next one, letter B, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to take the limit as n approaches infinity of n factorial over 2n factorial plus 1. And we're going to find this limit by multiplying the top and bottom by 1 over n factorial. When we do that, we get the limit as n approaches infinity of n factorial over n factorial over 2n factorial over n factorial, and then plus 1 over n factorial. That gets us to the limit as n approaches infinity of, the top becomes 1, uh, this part becomes 2, because the n factorials will cancel out, and then plus 1 over n factorial. Well then when we finally can put infinity into this, 1 over infinity is going to be 0, and we have a value of 1 half. Now, that does not equal zero, so this series diverges by the nth term test. On the last one, letter C, we have the limit as n approaches infinity of 3 to the n minus 2 over 3 to the n, and we can split this up using common denominator. We have limit as n approaches infinity of 3 to the n over 3 to the n minus 2 over 3 to the n. When we can plug infinity in, well, this is going to be 1, and we have 2 over infinity, that's 0. So this value goes to 1, and so we can say that the series 
diverges by nth term test.